Last night I made a mistake. And I took an action that I can't take back. And I'm not proud of what happened. I should not have treated that reporter that way. And for that, I'm sorry, Mr. Ben Jacobs. Well, new Congressman-elect Greg Gianforti apologized for body-slamming Guardian reporter Ben Jacobs, but only after winning Montana's special election. Despite being charged with misdemeanor assault on the eve of the vote, Gianforti narrowly defeated Democrat Rob Quist on Thursday. Gianforti faces a court appearance in Montana next month. And joining me now are MSNBC political con contributor Jason Johnson and former Breitbart News reporter Michelle Fields. Thank you both for being here. Michelle, you have the unique uh, you have the unique resume for this segment of having had encounters with campaign people who feel that journalists are fair game um, when Mr. Corey Lewandowski decided to shove you out of the way at, at, an, at an event. Do you think that this culture of treating members of the media um, as props at campaign rallies to be jeered at by the audience, as our own Katie Turr was subjected to by Donald Trump, or in just essentially treating them as the enemies of the public and encouraging people to boo them or even physically assaulting them. Is this now a thing in the Republican base? Uh, and why is it a thing if it is? Yes, unfortunately, it is a thing right now. But conservatives, ha conservatives have always been skeptical of the media. They've always had um, a very wary relationship with them. And the reason why is because they feel like they're all Democrats, that they are um, Democrats who are trying to make fun of them and don't put the story out correctly. Um, but the problem is, is I think that this has been very much acceler accelerated during the Trump administration. It's no longer that they distrust the media. They now despise the media. And it's created this very, Entire, like, it seems everything is entirely situational. In the case of Ben Jacobs, if Ben Jacobs had been attacked by a, a, a Democrat rather than a Republican, I think that Ben Jacobs would be the media darling of the right wing. I mean, he would be on the he every headline of Breitbart. He'd get back-to-back -back coverage on Fox News. But because it is a Democrat, then it, it because it is a Republican, it's completely different. So everything seems very situational. But this antagonistic relationship that uh, the Trump administration has with reporters, I don't think that's going away. And I think the conservative base is going to continue to have that because it's been like that for quite some time. Yeah. It's just now stronger. Yeah. And, and it starts at the top, um, obviously, Jason. Let's, let's start with the top. And this is Donald Trump, who took some time out of his uh, big boy trip abroad to make some comments about Gene 40. Take a listen. Thank you. And going one step below that, let's listen to uh, the various Republicans who refused to reject Gianforti even after he assaulted uh, the reporter. We had the head of the uh, National Republican Campaign Committee, the chair, Steve Stivers, who said, from what I know, Greg Gianforti, this is, a totally, this is totally out of character. You had Charlie Dent, Republican of Pennsylvania, say he was charged. We don't know all the facts. Trent Franks of Arizona. The left has, pre has precipitated this tense confrontational approach. Charlie Williams of Texas. If he wins, he'll have won re-election fair and he'll have won election fair and square. And Grothman, uh, a congressman from Wisconsin, and I think he'd be very welcome here in Congress. Seems like a good guy. And just one more, one more. This is a tweet from the governor of Texas, the current sitting governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, showing reporters a target sheet. He showed, I don't know if we have this element. This is element seven for my producers. And he says, I'm going to carry this around in case I see any reporters. That's supposed to be a joke, Jason. Um, this is disgusting. It's cowardly. Uh, this is how democracy dies. Um, I, I, I'll start off with this, jo uh, Joy. You know, first off, Jen Fort should be ashamed of himself. Uh, I hope they throw the book at him, even though the sheriff gave to his campaign. Um, if you're not tough enough, if you're not responsible enough, if you're not disciplined enough to take questions about the budget, you're certainly not tough enough and responsible enough to go to Washington, D.C. Because I promise you, I promise you, if you try a stunt like this with some of the reporters I know in D.C., you will see these hands and lawsuits suits in ways that you can't comprehend in Montana. <laughs> That's the first thing. The second thing is, I think that this is dangerous, not just because it represents a sort of cowardice on the part of the President of the United States, but a cowardice on the part of, of a political party that has to know that good reporting helps everybody. Having investigative reporters helps everybody. So if you want to claim, oh, well, these reporters are bad and, and terrible under these circumstances, you're going to miss out on the times where they're investigating the other side. So I think this is a dangerous precedent. It's dangerous to democracy, and it should 
should be an embarrassment to Paul Ryan and any Republican who wants to support this guy. And, you know, but I, have to, I think you have to also, you know, I'm not a big fan of the sort of veneration of the voter, Michelle. I think we give voters a pass on a lot of things, um, and we say it's the politicians who are sort of imposing this behavior on them. The Republican Party, the conservative movement, has been very critical of culture. They've talked about hip-hop culture, rap culture, being violent. Um, but let's take a look at a couple examples of the culture inside of the Republican Party right now. There was this chilling picture that came from, this is November, this is the day before the election, um, and it was a Trump rally, and a man had a shirt that read, Rope Tree Journalist. That was a Minneapolis rally for Donald Trump, and then he hashtagged it election 2016. So essentially a lynching uh, sort of uh, motif on his shirt. And then let's listen to a voter in Montana. This is a GN40 voter talking after she knew that he beat up Ben Jacobs. It didn't make me question my vote because I think he can do a good job. He has a business background, and I know him personally, so I think he can do a good job. I think he made a mistake in not holding his cool. And Michelle, this is somebody who not only was violent with this reporter, he has a history of being very erratic, he is tied to a suspected white nationalist and claims, oh, well, you know, I wasn't aware of some of his views. He's tied to a pastor who wrote that black families were stronger under slavery. This is not an unknown quantity. He's a guy with a bad history, a thuggish present, and yet Mont the voters of Montana are fine with it. I mean, I'm a conservative. I cannot defend that. Uh, I mean, that's just absolutely horrible. But I do think you're right in the sense that it comes from the top. You know, the Republican Party and as conservatives, we are always uh, like to say that we are the party of personal responsibility. If you do something wrong, you ask for forgiveness, you apologize, you do better. We believe in a rule of law and law and order. But it does seem as though now with a lot of conservatives, not all conservatives, but many high profile conservatives rather support and take the side of the party rather than the side of civility, of human decency. You saw, I don't know, Laura Ingram, who is a big conservative, basically applauding this, that, that Ben Jacobs didn't go in and fight back, that he got his lunch money taken yep. away. I mean, this is not conservative. This is very unconservative. Yeah, and not since the caning of Charles Sumner in the well of the United <laughs> States Senate by a pro-slavery South Carolina senator have we seen the sort of mainstreaming of this kind of violence. It has happened before. It is happening again. Jason Johnson will be back later in the hour. And welcome to the show. New friend of the show, Michelle Fields. Thank you very much Thank for you. being here. We'll have you back. And coming up, the Trump administration just reacted to the latest Jared Kushner story. Keep it right here. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.